Firearm season in Western Pennsylvania is winding down. After a two month long quest, I was finally able to film my girlfriend Kyla taking her first ever deer. I've turned my focus to looking to fill the freezer and a tag for myself, but with only three days remaining in the season, my odds don't look great. Following a text that canceled my afternoon hunt plans an hour away, I decided to pull the trail camera card from the only camera on my property, which we had recently moved to a new tree, and the very last video nearly knocked me off my chair. Immediately, it was clear this buck was far bigger than any I had ever gotten on trail camera, let alone actually had the chance to hunt. After studying his direction of travel and timestamp, I decided it was likely that he headed towards the creek to bed. I headed out with the best plan I could muster, stay far enough away that I won't bump him if things don't work out, and hope that he walks the same route in reverse before dark this evening. I really look at today and the next two days as the opportunity of a lifetime for a PA hunter. And realistically, I guess, this entire season hunting here has been that. But it's only been, at this point, about two hours since I became aware of the biggest buck that I've ever had the opportunity to hunt about 12 hours ago, thanks to the trail camera, we got a video of this just monster, not typical PA buck walking left to right, down the hill, across this trail, and down into the brush by the creek. The hope is he's gonna do the opposite, but with a little light left tonight. After some time sitting in silence, a noise in the brush behind me got my attention. Nothing was visible, but I took note of it. Soon, I heard it again. Only this time, as if he had appeared out of thin air, there he was, facing directly towards me. As careful as I could, I began to get the camera turned around. And I could not believe what I was seeing. At this point, not only are there trees blocking my line of sight that are not in the way of the camera, I am also not facing in a direction that would allow me to shoot. I need to pick my timing perfectly to spin to my right to have any hope of getting a shot. One little shift and he's looking right at me. I froze. This time, my opportunity was clear. 
and I made my move. Once again the buck catches on, but due to the distance and the trees that block my own shooting lane, he returns to going about his business. Daylight is fading as I wait for a shot opportunity at the biggest buck I have ever laid eyes on. I need him to cover just a few more yards to clear the trees that are blocking my shot opportunity, but as old bucks are apt to do, he is moving extremely slowly. Just when I was making mental plans for how I would get out of here without spooking him in hopes of an encounter in the two remaining days, he finally starts to move. is painstakingly slow. Every second that passes feels like a minute as I know I'm running out of time. If he clears the small trees, I'll have a shot. Just a few more steps. I've got to make sure I stay ready. There is no time to waste. I'm doing everything in my power to stay composed. I've been watching this buck for just over 10 minutes, but it feels like hours just wishing he would present that shot. One last step and I decide I can squeeze a shot past the trees. It's now or never. The buck of my dreams has finally stepped into the clear, giving me a shot opportunity. This is my chance.
I've ever seen in my life. We just had him on camera. <laughs> this morning, he came in behind me again every deer this year. He's coming behind me, but I was ready. I was talking to Kyla. She sent me a text. She said, pay attention behind you. Because it always happens. I looked up. I don't know if he stood up out of his bed. Came out of there. I dropped him. I don't think he's moved. I just see a white belly. I don't see movement. I'm gonna... I'm gonna call Kyla. Was it you, Bubba? It was. Yay! That was him. He got him? He dropped. <gasps> behind me. Oh, I knew it was gonna be behind you. Alright, give me a second, okay? I'm trying to tie my shoes. Yeah, but put orange on. I can see his... I got orange. I already got everything. I heard the shot and I ran down the base. <laughs> I can see his white belly. He's just laying there. Oh Yay! my god. Good job, baby. I literally prayed at 442. <sighs> he came right out, huh? He came out of the brush right where I thought he was. Oh you my god. What? He came where he thought he was? I sent Aaron a picture of the trees down there, and I said, I think he's laying in that. And I just, I thought, you're kidding me. And he was down in that dip. I had to wait until he got out of there and gave me a clear ethical shot. And he just tipped over. I, I couldn't see his belly. <laughs> Did you tell Aaron yet? I haven't told anybody except you. I'm coming. You coming? Okay. I'll see you in a minute. Yeah, I love you. I love you. Oh, what a year we've had. It's been so difficult. I can't wait for Kyla to get over here. Four months ago. I don't know where my glove is. My hand's cold. I know you can't hardly see me. Four months ago. I was looking for a, a house and I wasn't even looking for land that much. I was, that was the next step, you know. Just watching that white belly, he hasn't moved. Land was gonna be later. And Kyla sent me the link to this place. And I had this, you know, one in a million dream that there would be some amazing buck that lived here that was that buck. I can't believe it. I've known about that buck's existence for three hours. And he's dead. <laughs> My dad has been a part of every deer recovery with me from the time I was 10 years old up until now. So before I picked the buck up, I had to call him and send him a picture to let him be a part of this one as well. Hello? Did you see your phone? Huh? Check your phone. Okay. I got him. You got that big buck? I did. Wow. He's 14 points. I am in awe, and I think that's the right way to describe it. This season has been just the most humbling that I've ever experienced. It's, it's been nonstop. Every time that I think I've got an edge, it goes the opposite of how I expect. And quite honestly, I guess, in this case it did too. I didn't didn't think this was gonna work out. We got this guy on camera literally 13 hours ago and we checked the camera like four hours ago. And I'm sitting behind not only the biggest buck I've ever killed by a mile, but the biggest buck that I've ever had the opportunity to hunt, at least that I've been aware of. We've, in all the years that I've hunted, never had a trail camera picture or a sighting of anything like this and for it to be at the new place. I mean, I moved in not three months ago. Kyla got here a little bit after that. She found the place, as I said, and <laughs> don't imagine it was because of this necessarily that was in the area, but I just, 
<laughs> Speechless is not something that I am often, but I am right now. He's massive, and I'm looking at this main beam. He resembles Double Edge, the buck that we saw on the first day at my parents, but <laughs> with a whole lot more character. I, I cannot believe not only that he was around here, but that he stepped out in daylight, gave us that shot, dropped him in his tracks, finally got to use the, the rifle that Kyla got to kill a deer with before I did. I've had that gun for a couple years, and what a first. This guy's going on the wall, absolutely no doubt. And uh, I don't even know what to say. This is incredible. Yeah, it's been, like I said, it's just been a slap in the face in a way this season. Yesterday, I finally had an opportunity at some does, and I would have been happy to fill the freezer, and even that managed to slip away. And it's been tough, but stuck it out, and I, no words. No. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever had that kind of reaction to a trail camera video. Um, Kyle and I saw that it was the last video we went through the entire card and I probably stared at it for like a half hour, finally got a plan together. I moved spots like three times. You did. <laughs> just for, for the first time since the opener of archery, I was in the right spot. Mm -hmm. I've been in the wrong spot, we've been in the wrong spot. They've come out behind us, even this was behind me, I had to shift around and I wish that the GoPro would have been in a better angle to, to display that because it was directly behind me so I didn't even use it but I had to spin almost 180 degrees, but it worked perfectly. Got the job done. That's gonna be a pretty cool addition to the new house, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right when you walk in, right in your face. <laughs> Let everybody know. Yeah, he's big. Stunning. I don't know, I wouldn't have really expected something this big here because looking at the trail camera pictures and everything you know we like we saw what, a good seven or eight point and some spikes and does but whenever we saw that this morning i was like oh, we'll go back to exist november 4th i think it was i was sitting in the stand back here and one of those younger deer came through and i mentioned you know my, my standards are a little lower here um you know we just got the place and it was a little bit of a you know, I'll lower my standards for the first buck on, on land that I own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only, only way bigger than anything I've ever seen. How are you going to top this next year? Or, <laughs> I don't know. His genes are around. I promise that. He is old. Yeah. So, there may be other ones. I don't think there's ever going to be one quite like him. But, he'll be immortalized. Definitely. Well, I apologize for the setup today. I've got a camera mounted on the windshield, I've got a microphone in my hand. Kyla's back at home with the puppy, so making do with what I got. Today is a special day for me. We're taking the buck to go and get it officially scored in hopes of making the PA record books. In the state of Pennsylvania, you need a 140 inch typical or a 160 inch not typical. And I green scored the buck uh, the day after I shot it, and it came out to 180 and 68 gross. And I think it was about 169 some change, net not typical. So as long as we didn't lose more than nine inches over the course of the 60 day drying period, we should be good um, with that buck to make it as not typical. And it was still 152 net typical. So we'd have more than 12 inches of lose um, for that. So I believe it's gonna make it. I'm excited to go and do that. Ever since I was really young, I wanted a buck that would make the books. And quite frankly, as I got older, hunting in PA and, and you know, the last couple of years, I've only started to branch out, but I have always wanted to have a record buck in PA. And the quality of the bucks that I've hunted, while there's been some nice bucks, it started to become apparent that that wasn't going to be as easy a task as I always thought. And then out of nowhere comes this buck. And, to me, he's always going to be a PA 180. I know the gross score doesn't matter for the, for the records. My brother scored him actually at 181 and 28, so right in the middle would be 181. I just think it's incredible, but I can't wait to go and see 
what the official formats of the I have not played tape to them since the drying period has started. So it's going to be intriguing, but I'm excited. When I saw that score, 171 and 3 8 inches, I could have fainted. The second biggest non-typical whitetail ever taken in my county. The biggest in 80 years. Not only did the buck score higher than what my own attempt at scoring him came out to, his gross score of 179 and 1 8 confirms to me a green gross score of over 180 inches. I have no doubt an inch of antler, if not more, would have been lost during the drying period. 171 and 3 8 will always be the score that shows in the books, but carrying 180 inches of antler as he stepped out on December 9th is what matters most to me. With that, our season comes to a close. And what a season it was. From Isaac overcoming COVID to finally punch a tag, Finally got my first dead attack killed. To TK taking his first ever fallow buck. As well as the first ever legal bow harvest in Latvia. I always get a bit of that emotional. To Kyla, who was able to take her first ever white-tailed deer. That gave me more confidence to know that I could make the shot on her and clearly. A season of first, and one that none of us will ever forget. On behalf of all of us with the Meat Hunters, I'd like to thank you for watching. This journey has been nothing short of incredible, and we couldn't be happier to share our season through the lens of a camera with you.